you get your Naga's sleep, so you got your combination to go into a black hole if required. And is Nesty and Lena really going to stop? Like, they can stop the push because Lena is fantastic at that. Like, that's you one what, thing though? which I really love from like Lena. Her, ca her counter push ability is really great. Um, but at the same time, like once you get caught inside that black hole, you're going to get destroyed quickly. Yeah, no, well, in terms of teamfight potential, there's not many heroes that can beat it. But the problem with running Enigma on Dire is you also have a bad writer in this game. And I think you're gonna I think this game, heavy. what's going to end up is, yeah, they're just going to cancel each other out instead of going off and canceling them out. So if they want to pick up the Enigma, I mean, it's, it's always a fantastic pick, but they'll have to be very, very keen on where they get their farm and space. Because they won't create it for they, each other. The other option is they expect the aggro trial lane, they get something more like a coddle. Someone like, because SC and Lena are not really the most healthiest of heroes out there. So just continue with spam to bring him down. Oh! Yeah, you're on the money. Coddle is actually pretty good this game. And I guess the only only thing he should worry about is Puck as well as the zone up potential. But mm -hmm. with Skywrath, most supports end up working. And when it comes to something like Coddle, which is very stagnant, I would say, it'll work as well. It's, but... it's just really good against an aggro tri line more than anything else. And with the Skywrath mage, like that combo there, like if, if Navi even wanted to, they could dodge. Like, they could actually dodge with this kind of lineup. Mm -hmm. It looks like, yeah, and so with that pickup, they will actually have a host on the Naga Siren, and it will be fairly strong in terms of lanes for both sides. But Navi still do lack a lot of disable with that Coddle pickup. I have to say, they don't have very good reliable stuns early. So, but, even though Coddle's the, really the good team, at mitigating that, I think it's really damn good if they can survive the early game. Yeah, I, I think, again, though, it's it's just weird because they put themselves in a situation with that Coddle pick where they actually have to survive the early game. Whereas with their initial four set of picks, they could have done it multiple ways and they would have just ended up surviving no matter what. But all of a sudden, I feel like the aggressive trialing potential out of Fnatic is, it, it really is a concern. It's it's greedy, but it could really pay off. If these Illuminates keep, like, hit, like, two heroes at a time, every time they're channeled off by NS, then for me, I think Na'Vi wins the lane. Because the Lena, as well as the SD, can't come in close. And that's, that's where the primary problem for me arri arrives here for Fnatic. The, their lineup just can't directly fight. They're not strong enough. Like, and if you do come in close, you only can cast a shot it up, you're going to get blasted down again, and you're going to have a Naga Siren who will either be riptiding you, giving a lot of negative armor, and also that's a second level of burst damage, or you're getting ensnared. So you're locked down and controlled even more than that. And here is like a faceless void. It may even be worth it, and I cannot believe I'm saying this because I'm really not a believer in this type of build, uh, but it might be worth getting an extra point up in, in the uh, mana leak up against someone like a faceless void if he does end up on the offlane. And the primary reason I flag that is because faceless void's mana pool is just so low that if you do get a mana leak off and he leaps once, he's not leaping a second time anytime soon. Yeah, I, I do agree with the mana leak pickup. Unfortunately, though, he's already gotten the Illuminate, assuming that oh, there's going to be some sort of aggressive... He's, he's not getting a level 1. I'm not, I'm not saying level 1. I, like, I'll, say, I'll say level 3, potentially level 4. Uh, oh, I see. You, you can you know, level 1 mana leak. leak is actually pretty good. They've buffed that spell enough to the point where it's annoying at all levels. And I have to say, you really have to watch out for it. Even though he has to go relatively close distance in the early levels, it's very annoying to offlaners and it's a very good tool for zoning out targets. But with the safe lane tri lane and kind of being secured because Fnatic haven't really yeah, they're not committing to an aggressive tri lane of sorts. What's gonna happen to is yeah, Navi supports will get the space they need to operate in the jungle for the keeper or maybe just walking around the main lane and uh, zoning out targets with the Skywrath. We do kinda of get ourselves back into that little point though, which is is the jungle gonna to start to get crowded? Like, you're running NS now inside the jungle, so he's kind of got to be stacking for his teammate. So it's FNG, so a Vors can take the farm, because they put Puck on the top lane. They don't, they can't kill Puck until they're maybe level 4 on both the supports. Then then they have a chance for Like, you need Seal, you need all damage at a good level. Um, yeah, you, you just need something more than what Na'Vi have at their level 1 potential fighting. Uh, mm -hmm. So does this turn then into stacking and farming the jungle? Funnick is actually like, he spotted out the aggro tri lane down here and he's coming nowhere near this. He knows if he tries oh to come and gosh, contest it, be, he's going to get again. disrupted as well as flame breaked. Uh, uh, as well as, as well as light, light, light striker raid. What's happening again? Mid lane void is happening again. No, 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 no. Uh, we're, we're looking at it now, but this isn't going to become a, co a, a common occurrence. And I love this from Dendi. Doesn't level up clap. 
levels up drunken brawler. As, uh, no, uh, yeah, levels up uh, uh, drunken haze as his, as his first ability. Screwing with the rise as much as possible. Yeah, I'm gonna let my bias kick in here. I think I don't think Monatic can can win this after the 10 minute mark. I'm just, I'm just gonna lay out it's, very it's, brutal. Explain Calder. the reason. Like, okay, yeah, Bi it's, bias, it's, is, it's, bias is okay as long as you got logic to support it. Yeah, like this. Uh, so the basis is that if anytime mid lane void happens, what happens is after level six they start walking around the map trying to get ganks, and what? if they don't do that, they're locked inside the lane. The way this Void Hero farms in this patch is not actually by hitting creeps. He's not very good at pushing out lanes, even if he has a Maelstrom and a Mask of Madness, it just becomes faster. He's not really good at showing himself on the map, because when he shows himself on the map, it's kind of like a bounty hunter, you're not really afraid of him. So mid lane is actually the worst, because mid lane happens to be that lane where you want to push the tower kind of fast, just like the safe lane, and get map control, have rune control most importantly, and just have that map vision dominance and if a hero is there that can't push up the lane as i say that almost gets first kill and on the pocket top lane then all of a sudden you're kind of losing the strategy battle and this this kind of setup at mid it's it's already like a strategic loss the way i see it panda is so much better as a, as a mid lane hero than a void i am really surprised that ace actually died up on that top lane this observer wall which has got planted spots fng perfectly but he has been battling directly with fng like, he was sitting at one third of life points last time I just checked that top lane before he ended up dying. And that was just because he tried to trade blows with the Skywrath Mage. And as a puck, that's never really going to end well for you. Especially when the Skywrath Mage decides to not get Concussive Shop and went into a seal instead. That allowed Avors to use his Ensnare and Riptide both onto the puck. And that's that burst damage I'm talking about, which you can just pull out. While also at the same time, we should flag the fact that Funic is farming up the uh, the stacks. Oh my gosh, he, that is huge! They they prepped this from the very very start, man. Like they, Funic actually cut through the trans. He's not getting through it all, however. He doesn't have enough damage and life points to actually finish the job, and this is actually a little bit more problematic for him. Uh, yeah. But they they cut the tree line here, so on the one minute mark, they actually had themselves a double stack. Oh, and this is stacking that other camp as well with this yeah. nuke. They're not even bothering to finish it. They're gonna let Funic get the whole lump sum. Unfortunately for him, he got mud golems as one of the sets. Ah, uh, so unfortunate indeed. But he still does. Oh, you know what? He actually doesn't get the big camp stack off either because of the dark troll summoner. What are these unfortunate guys indeed. Just doing here. It's just like chilling in the middle of nowhere. They don't belong to a camp. Being a nuisance. That is all. Poor NS. He needs a second level. He really needs that chakra. Uh, the, the chakra. Without the chakra, he just doesn't have the mana in order to farm up every like farm up the jungle. He needs to leech from somewhere else. Just watching carefully on the supports on the side of the Radiant on Fnatic. About to crack level 3 on the side for Lina, and of course Shadow Demon picks up level 2. He hasn't skilled a single spell yet, which is kind of interesting, but I guess he never really had a need to, so that's fine. Although the Shadow Poison actually helps you jung stack jungle better, because you can do it from a distance. But regardless, they're continuing what they're doing, and Hani picks up the trademark. Phase boots Lu Luna. It's really fun because the hero is the fastest in the game, but when it comes to carry potential, you better want to end this game early with a lot of stat items because phase boots does not help you scale on Luna. No, why? Right now, it I doesn't help you farm jungle either. Right now, I I'm fairly certain he's just like, well, you know what? I'm gonna get every single last hit in this lane, and I'm fine. Like that's it. That's because no one's pressuring him. The bat rider won't appear for at least another three minutes in his mind, so he's still got a lot of time to farm up. Then, and by that point, he should at least have the start of his drums. Like that, I'm talking like Bracer and everything else. Actually, got a smoke game coming up from Rise. He has skilled now. It's a one-one skill. He sees FNG coming down the tree line. Oh, I hope they don't this, settle for a support. They're this time, Energy's support. here. They want to go for the support. The Illumin's gonna. In fact, only here on Rise. They've already got one kill. Batrider. He's actually dying. Okay, okay. He's dying to neutrals at the moment. But of course, gonna rotate in, rotate in on the after Ace. There is, of course, that uh, Ensnare available. But also at the same time, there's Denny moving in. There's your Ensnare. He wanna come on me. He realized Ace is just gonna face shift out of it. The Lion Strike array control the Vorse for a little bit. But Tendi with his haste oh, he's got three stick charges and he's wanting to chase down somebody. He can't get close enough to them. So he'll just run past them all and head back in towards the middle lane. And somehow Funic is now on 30 live points. And did he, did he fail to finish the camps again? So he's just got one injured centaur left. But he yeah, keeps yeah, finding he damn mud golems every time. 
yeah, that's Mud Golems really do hurt the progression for these jungle reliant heroes. But regardless, he's still at 1.4k gold. He's super duper farmed, and I kind of hope he doesn't rush the blink dagger. I'm not too sure how effective it is to get it before the tranquil boots, but it looks like he actually wants to do that. So I guess if he can get a huge Luna pick off or something with his first blink initiation, that's fine. But aside from that, I think tranquil boots is normally more efficient. He might be looking to control the puck up more than anything else because that puck is still sitting at 1-1. I, I'm talking CS wise. I, I say now she's doubled her CS, tripled her CS, now Triple three one. CS, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you can keep the puck down, this blink dagger will never arrive, and the puck will have no presence in this game because he's he's not going to combo with the faceless void and throw in a wonderful macro pyre or something like that. It's like ah, uh, you chrono, I can rip on. That's all. Hardy trouble in the bottom lane. He's going to face boost himself up. Still three two six movement speed. They seal him. Orb attack, Denny just looking to get the clap off here. He does have split of Valble. Hardy gonna cut through the tree line. The clap did manage to connect. Oh, yeah. He's gonna slow him down, but rise the neighborhood and Denny. Star of the split, now Void. He's, he's baiting the Chrono. Denny's on the edge. Can they get support in there? Hardy, the oh, ultimate oh. reaches Denny. He'll never Why get the split off. I really didn't know if that Eclipse was gonna really reach him from there. Yeah, that was that was quite an interesting turn of events, I must say. But again, Bendy's still okay with that. They committed two long cooldown ultis for that, which he knows now, of course. And it's unfortunate that he's not too close to his blink dagger, but he's not too far off either. He'll go back to the mid lane and resume what he's doing. And once he gets his level four clap, he can zone out the void much more effectively. Again, the, the commitment that needs to come out of this void hero to leave the lane to gank one hero with a chronosphere, it's it's way too much, and it, it doesn't belong anymore. It's kind of like playing clockwork in mid lane these days. <laughs> We don't really see that much, even though we did see it once. Actually, we saw it once during ESL, didn't we? I think it was S4 that actually did that. Didn't he go off lane with it? I believe every clocky game he actually went off lane, but You're I can't right. recall it. You are right. Yeah. It, it, it's, it happens for a reason, simply put. It's not that good at mid anymore. Just yeah. doesn't offer that follow-up skill potential. Well, right now, Ryze has returned back towards the mid lane. Also, look at Faceless Void's build. No early Mask of Madness, no early DPS. He goes for the Ring of Aquila instead. So not, not, even Normally like, I would... not even like it rushing into drums or something. Well, yeah, I don't know how effective drums would be on the Void, but this is the thing with the Equilla pickup too. It's it's actually nice for mid lane, because you need to give that creep uh, the bonus for your creeps for the armor so they can actually push out on their own, since your hero can't do it effectively. But at the same time, every early game goal matters for Void so much that this Aquila, like he's trying to farm up the jungle right now, it's not at a good rate. And in the meantime, his supports are probably farming faster than him, so... Ace, trouble on the top lane. They're going to seal him. He can't join himself away because of this. And he's trapped a long way out. Simple riptide, simple movement up there. And he didn't do the quick jump. Oh, and you know what? Dendi did something I didn't really expect him to do. And I, I, I don't understand the basis for this one. You mean the Arcane? He went Mana Boots. Yeah, in, instead of rushing the Blink, he actually went Mana Boots. I, I'm... It, it, it kind of makes even less sense when you're running around with the Keeper of the Light. Yeah, uh, I, I'm actually completely confused by that one. That that makes no sense to me, because if he had Blink Dagger, he could apply like a triple kill potential on these single target supports as well as possibly the Luna. Of course, he won't get a triple kill alone, but like... Maybe, the... maybe it was more for the spam. But even then, he got Bottle. And with the runes, like, you don't really care about that kind of man. Now, Blink it by Funny, he's not going to get anywhere near that Faceless Void. Yeah, yeah he, I, he needs I'm the speed. Confused. He needs the speed of the Tranquil Boots. Honestly, this Bad Rider Rush Blink thing, it's its a thing of the past. And there's a reason why the Bad Riders, they get the bottle as well as the Tranquils these days. It's okay to have a 10, 12 minute Blink Dagger, even if it's delayed by a few minutes, because your impact will be much higher at that point, And you'll farm better after it too. So. Navi are coming, bottom line. Meanwhile, yeah, Look, look, look at the pings. The pings came out from the Void just saying, Yo, honey, be very, very careful. He picked up a Morbid Mask, he's running ahead of Midas built. But there's a smoke movement coming up from Funnick as well as Dendi. So they'll see Hani oh, come so back into towards the lane. There is the Blink line suit, and this time it'll be in range. They drag it back, they'll go for the clamp. The Eclipse won't be able to help out Hani here. And Brewmaster will get a Drunken Brawler connection in. Now top lane, a Vorse, Dream Coil, and he just Naga sleeps. Holds him in position, he might turn it off in time for... No, he doesn't. Actually, come on, he gets hit by it because the Vorse backed up far enough. Uh, but the Illuminate is able to hit into the Vorse has a Relic, Toby. Hmm? He has a relic. Oh, we're 10 minutes in on a Naga. Yeah. Where the hell did he get that kind of money? Like, yeah, what, he has what, a like, relic. There's not even a tier 1 tower uh, down. Has he been like robbing children or something? Like where the hell does his cash come from? 
Uh, I actually do want to point one thing out though. With Naga Siren, it's actually better to get some stat items before your Relic Rush or your Radiance Rush rather. It's better to have a Ring of Aquila at least, and sometimes it's better to have Drums even before the Relic or the Radiance itself. But it's it's fine. Again, Arise. it's still ridiculously fast Radiance. You yeah, he's have, looking for kill you here, but he can't do it alone. This, Arise. He needs more help. The SD's coming in right now. But at the same time, he's going to chrono. Oh, too early. Way too early. Can't early. help him. Ace, he's going to orb himself in, but Avorst, he's got enough range on this. Support's rotating up here for Na'Vi. Now Ryan's going to drop, but actually bought more time for FNG to come in. He's actually got his ult and but not enough mana to use it. Avorst still does actually go down. Shadow Demon will get the kill. The couple of Lumina to the face for this, and Denny after the clap too. He's searching for some kind of opening. Arise leaves himself up, and Funnick, the flame break, it actually hit. Arise will have his CP cancelled. He's backtracking a hell of a lot of this damage. Doesn't backtrack the clamp, however. And Skyrath Mage will take the kill. So it's a forced to the faces point. So we don't get to see our amazing 12 minutes uh, Radiance up and running for a Naga Siren, which would have been probably the fastest one I've seen in a very long time. Yeah, still still going to be relatively fast. He's coming back with full life points, full mana, going to resume his farming. But I, I have to kind of question Havos there. I, I feel like uh, if he ran north up towards his Keeper of the Light, the presence of the Keeper will be able to just zone out the Puck and the, and the Void, who's pretty much dished out their entire kit. Oh. As I say that, funny, looking for the hunt. Yeah, he couldn't get close enough again to get these, uh, these lassoes off. So he fell short this time around. Uh, to also answer the question too, like my own self, like why I was in disbelief. Uh, Havorst was the one to get the two kills in the top lane. So he had the injection of, of killing off the puck, so that's where a lot of his cash did come from. Yeah. Every bit helps. Yeah. And it's also because he's also, <laughs> like there's no drum build. Like most Nagasarans that we see going ratings is normally will go into the drums first. We'll probably even consider finishing up the treads. Well, uh, not, 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 not trades. What am I travel. talking about? Yeah, um, yeah the, the Aquila is what you really want. That yeah. passive mana region and the 18 Radiant damage boost on your main hero is really important for how this is. Getting the wrong item in my in my brain. Bottom lane, this, they smoked in to go for this one. Disruption and catcher connects over on Denny. He's got to get the split off and can't get it off in time. They had enough follow up damage using the Guna Blade as well. That Illumina did not help their case. And it's going to TP out. A rise, first hit time lock. Balls to the wall. Puck. We'll be the one getting the kill though when a force. Naga sleep, five seconds. He's going away for the Oh gosh. I don't think he had the space for it anyway. Yeah, he probably would have gotten orb down honestly, but he Funny. his hero went back, so he had auto cast uh, auto attack on basically. That's unfortunate. Funnick survived Funnick on fifteen life help. points. He hang he hung low enough that the shadow poison didn't connect on him, and that would have actually been his death. Uh, actually it's, it's a level one shadow poison, but it's still enough. Uh, oh, FNG versus Rise. They yeah. found each other. He's gonna seal him though. The cousin shot's already gone. The orb. Rise, Mystic Flare as well. He's on the run. He's had Tranquil Boots, so he's looking pretty damn good. Nice. Gave more mana to the Sky Wrath Mage. Still a little bit too far away from having Concussion Shot. Disrupts over on Dendi, because then he was the one running in with that haste rune of his. And a Rise, he has Chrono available, but does not want to fight this Rise. They're going to purge up Dendi. The Drunken Haze are going to try and slow him down. They get you Concussion Shot again, but Rise just keeps running. This game has to be marked as a lot of like some of the most misfortunate decisions of history. The the amount of situations that Dendi would have wished for a blink dagger, and the amount of situations of Vos would have wished to be at a different place instead of like with his team kind of thing. I, I can't I can't express the the importance of like this Dendi. He just got his haste rune purged off, or it was kind of expiring too anyway. But even at bottom lane, the fact that he was so near the creep wave, so deep into the tower. Is I guess he had the haste run, so he was feeling confident, but he probably wouldn't have been there in the first place if he had a blink. He would be at the back lines waiting to initiate with the blink. Mm -hmm. And of course, the chase at mid and the chase at bottom is more justification to that fact. I'm I'm pretty sure he's regretting this mana boot pickup right now. Honestly, he would have had his blink without it. I don't know, man. It's we're, we're both of the same mind as far as that blink dagger choice. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe we'll ask any a little bit later on uh, the reasons why. But now I'm seeing the Sky Wrath Mage rotate top. Funnick, he's looking for a Blink Lasso. It's Blink and Boots first. BT's first. Oh, I like Funnick. that pickup. Yeah, that's so smart for this game. He's got to go Radiant now. Not, the Firefly is, the firefly is running out. Blink, Lasso, just let the Mystic Flare go. He's holding on to it as long as he can, so he doesn't actually have to expand the mana. In fact, I don't think he actually had the mana pool available for it. That's why he waited as long as he could for them to seal. Avorst, he'll get coroned up. Funnick, he can't save his teammate right now. Avorst is stuck in here with the Laguna Blade as well. All they can look to do is get some collateral kills. But Arise is not making it easy for them, and they will be backing themselves up. 
The Lion Strike Array, a little bit off target there from Come With Me. There's also a Lena who is going phase boot scrums built without getting a single point up into the fiery soul. Which means the mana pool really is quite abysmal for her. And it's also SD's running around with Arcane Boots himself. Like, what do you actually think about Come With Me's build? I don't mind it. I think uh, it's similar to last game. He's transitioning to this uh, foil position that's strictly for farming and gearing up to semi-carry kind of thing. And again, this is one of those games where they really need that kind of backup. This Void is not in any position to carry this game. As we've seen, Orize has been walking around the map faithfully, just landing Kronos every opportunity he has. And might have mentioned that Havos has actually died three times ever since his 10-minute Relic pickup. Yep. So by 16 minutes, he actually doesn't have ratings. So. Dandy, on the other hand, has decided for something else for herself, saying that, okay, I really need this Blink Dagger. And he was just hitting Jungle Creeps for a very long time, even though that top engagement was happening for like a minute. Mm -hmm. He just ignored it completely and just kept hitting Rock Golems and stuff, realizing the urgency for this Blink Dagger. Uh, he, need, he really, really did need that. Now on bottom line, I think Na'Vi just realized they need to get some towers down, so when S, he's probably just going to recall all his friends in, and then again, his ultimate just wore off. He could have potentially actually dragged FNG to that bottom lane. But they're trying to use the Vor's solutions for Riptide, just to kill off most of the creep wave and then force the, force the bottom tower out. But while all this is going on, Funnik is still hovering around the mid. And T1 tower in mid lane is actually within deny range as well. Oh man, I don't I don't like what Havos is doing here. Even though he has the backup of his teammates, like this Naga hero, he should just stay inside the jungle and hide away from enemies. Force them to walk into their side of the map. He's been showing himself way too much, which I think is a good reason why he's died three times between the last six minutes. And uh, yeah, I think he's finally got his Radiance, but it's a little bit late because Hani has been free farming continuously ever since that time. Yeah. And Hani's really big too, by the way. Yeah, he's, he's really, really he's big. He's 8.6k. Yeah. He's already got his Yasha up and running. I'll assume that's going to be a BKB in this. Yeah, most likely. I, I hope it's not an SMY, that's all. Now, Funnick, he's been scouted out by this Observer Ward. So Hani is very much aware of what's going on. And then just runs himself into the dire jungle. The Courier's about to turn back over the top of his Oh, head. he's trying to snipe the Courier. And he doesn't, he doesn't have vision of it, though. He's just hiding for the moment. He'll see the courier and now it's like, oh wait, I can get this. Mask of Madness movement speed. Oh. But he lost the vision of it in the fog of war. And that's gonna try and hold the bottom lane. That's a level two illuminate only. And he did actually get that early point up with the mana leak like we're talking about. So he's trying to find the extra control and Denny, blink, clap, can't be some trouble. Concussive shot, the chrono though. It oh, holds him out, it also cuts off the path for Funnick. He'll blink dagger himself in, actually got the flame break up, so can't be. Cannot escape, be left to the uh, device of the rest of Navi lineup. So they can keep diving in with his Brulings, finding Rise, send him up in towards the air. So now he's out looking for two hero kill off as well as the tier one tower in the bottom lane. And they should easily take it. Rise will disrupt himself oh, off. He's still got clap, stun, affected him, and a force makes more of himself. But they'll finish up the tier one tower here. And already Honey just goes for the straight trade off. He's trying to bring down the tier one tower in the middle lane. That was quite the interesting application of Corner right there. Oh, NS. He recalled. He recalled a boss. Oh, the worst time. Sleep, sleep. He couldn't get it up in time. The worst time. I came here for a battle. Now Arise runs away. FNG. Do some extra damage with the Mystic Flare, forcing Arise back up again. He does not have mana to jump. They mana leak him up, and he'll walk all the way or TP himself all the way back to base. He got stunned up because he did run out of mana. But that was after he got himself back into the well. So a boss goes down in mid. This is also another tricky tidbit, but if FNG actually earned them at the start with his initial set of burst, I think uh, he would have gotten that kill on Void. So it's unfortunate that he, he missed that earn there, but earn is really, really strong now with the with the pure damage. Yeah, but because he doesn't, he didn't, and that means the trade-off goes the way of uh, Fnatic. Still so even. In fact, the net worth is only difference of 50. That's the only difference between it. The experience is still on for Fnatic. They've been coming up on the fights a little bit better. Suppose we should actually flag the fact that when it's only 50 dim uh, difference in the net worth, and you're three towers ahead as Na'Vi, that should be a warning bell for you right there. <laughs> Fnatic are definitely keeping up. Even though it's 8-8, eight, eight, across the board they're making a lot more use of the, of the uh, creeps. And not to mention Hani's still running this hand of minus on him. So it's a really good injection of money coming into him, and we haven't seen this Naga Siren Radiance really pay off. Oh, wow. Now that maybe catch Dendi. The Silence was there, Ryzer, they wasted a lot of time with the Silence, but with Disruption and Counter into Laguna Blade, they guarantee the kill. 
And Funnick was too late for this. He's just going to blink himself down and Firefly the Creep Wave down to stop this mid push from happening. But Ryze is back with level 2 Chrono, ready to fight. Hmm. It's a weird comment to make, but I feel like Dendi is, uh, something's off about his game. I, I normally don't see him getting picked off in those kind of situations. Usually he's like one of the fastest reactions. And I, I, I guess, uh... Guys, he needs more help. He's got it coming up as well. It's going to be Ace. Jumps in with that park and purges on the boss. They saw him farm because of the aggressive Observer Ward inside the jungle. And they hit their timing absolutely perfectly on Na'Vi. That's another death. That's five deaths now in total for the Naga Siren. And Funnick trying to chase down Ace, but he just can't keep up. And now Void got the Chrono. He'll be sealed up, but he already gets Chrono off. Has to back himself up. If he's in the Mystic Flare, he'll be dead right now. And Arise TPing out. The Flame Break will be, can will be uh, cancelling it off. While in middle lane, calmly, completely out of mana. So what looked like a really good couple of engagements from Fnatic. Na'Vi just got a hell of a lot back with the death of the Void and the death of the Lina. For no collateral. Mm -hmm. Well, even then, though, I'm, I'm still like kind of surprised at the way they're playing this out. I, I feel like... Um... I feel like Honey is honestly just getting way too much space, and at this rate, he might just end up taking this game 1v5. True. He's, his farm rate is so fast, and of course with the Midas giving him the bonus EXP, he's already at level 16. And if he dies once, he's gonna give up a huge Top time. Lane. Rise is gonna go down too. Pick offs here and there. And yeah. I, I, I want to get your opinion on this too, as I just saw it being purchased up. Now, I look at the Navi lineup, and again, I brought this up in game number one about the mech choice and the fact there is a lack of a mech choice. And it's built a, uh, bought a gem first in this I lineup. think it's fine. I don't think they need mech. I don't think mech actually helps them at all. A lot of fanatics fighting Dyer's potential comes from just being able to burst down specific targets. And mech is not only not going to save them, but also they just want to shut down vision so their Batrider and Panda can apply a lot of kill pressure from the dark. And I think that's all that matters. This Luna, again, getting so much free farm, mostly because she's getting space. It's based from the fact that Fnatic's lineup, the other four, are just killing heroes that I don't personally feel that should be dying, but they're getting them anyway due to good vision and, I guess, good opportunities. But overall, yeah, it, it shouldn't allow them to assemble his vibe like this. Ooh, jump in, Ace, caught again, out Dendi, he got the silence, but then he got FNG, turns around, but with both the, uh, oh the Eclipse and as well as the Laguna Blade being triggered. The Brewmaster drops very quickly and life just got even harder with a full Yule Scepter being completed over on Come With Me. And they want to go in again. And that's just keeping him back with just... Well, actually, that Illuminate did absolutely no damage. And what are you doing, Come With Me? The Yule Scepter's up. There's a lot of support there. They're just watching him. They see him on Come With Me. And now Arise. Now, could it be a triple chrono? In fact, it will be. But on his own teammates, the Flame Break from Funny bounced him out. They walked back into it at one point. But the Gem of True Science has been dropped. It'll be picked up here by Arise. And a Vorse will stop them. The Firefly is there. They have a Lasso of Bubble. Kami should just burn anyway here. He doesn't have Laguna Blade available. He doesn't have Yule Scepter. Now he does. But he'll still die the Nagra Siren, Siren Illusions while the Void, he got out with the gem. Dropped it back inside the well. And this is why I wasn't so sure about buying a gem this early on. Because the Coddle can't survive. Yeah, that is that is true. Also, I think uh, Funny could have Flame Break the Void like he did last time. But he was kind of... Yeah, he actually noticed the Void in time. I guess he opted to go for the Lasso instead of the Flame Break. So it's kind of unfortunate that they missed that kill. But I think the bigger story of all these fights is, again, the Dendi getting picked off at the start. I normally don't see it out of this guy. I, it's it's very, very weird, his play, watching it this game. Starting from the Mana Boots pickup, it's... I'm not sure what's going on. He's it's, not playing at the, the usual stellar game that he has with Panda. He's usually really, really strong with this hero. It is and with, given the picks of the Fnatic, like, this Shadow Demon, attack. Lina, these heroes, honestly, they're kind of food for Panda Brewmaster after 20 minutes. But right now, they're eating him up instead. Funnick found an opening. It's Arise. Blink. Lasso. Well, NS tried to actually tr use the mana leak on Arise, but he dragged, uh, Funnick dragged him close to FNG, who just did yeah. his ulti combo with him. Now Ace oh, is looking up. for the Dream Coil. He doesn't know if he's fully in range, and then the Blinding Light pushes him back a long way, and then gets a two-man Dream Call, with Hani in the middle of it, using the Bouncing Glaives. They get the Yule Scepter initiation into the Batrider as well, giving a double kill to the Puck. And this is just pumping more Radiant's money into the offlane. It was meant to be shut down, but now Radiant's Puck's walking around with enough to actually buy a full four star. Yeah, and you know what? Honey is worth 15,000 gold and counting. 4k in his inventory. The TPs are coming into the bottom lane. The Vost is Yasha will arrive. He does have BTs available. It's a quick loose of beam from Honey. Try to slow down her Vost. But they weren't going to control him anyway. He's walking around with, uh, with sleep now with cooldown. Oh, wow, come with me. Playing on the aggressive here. 
He has Yule Scepter. I think he's gonna go for a solo play here. He doesn't have Laguna Blade, however, and Dendi was actually considering the split. Like, he saw the he animation. Can then he can force a BKB or something. Yeah, he forced the BKB. That was perfect. Honey, I think he, they, they should have known that they had no catch there. That was overstaying their welcome. Well, then he's wow, he's gonna go for round two. He's got Blink to clap in, in one second time. Yeah, he can go and come with me. All he needs is a good hit with it. Oh, the Eclipse. Then he just can split. Oh, oh, he got it off. Oh, he got it off. That animation time is a little bit longer. And now, well, they put it away. Come with me. You'll set her up at the same time. The Storm Brewing set the Lunar up into the Yeah. That's why it looked like they both yules at the same time. But Hunt's gonna get stunned up. There's really not enough follow up to get in here. He'll leave the fire brewing on the front line, and yeah, they both get a timeout. While up on top lane, you got Rise. He's mana leaking and just stand stands his ground. Will die on the top lane. The Faceless Void also dropped up here. So it's three technically for the price of what? What was really lost here from Navi? Nothing really, just the Brewmaster ulti committed, but then they're still farming the enemy jungle. So in terms of map control, they've, they've gained all, lost none. But did you see how fast that Void dropped though? He got Ancient sealed up, didn't backtrack anything, and then the Illuminate Blast and I guess the Skywrath Nuke with the Batrider Flame Break, he just disappeared, 100 to 0 right off the bat. It was ridiculous. I missed, I missed this, Seth, I'm afraid. I was watching the bottom lane. Funnick, hey. you, you, <laughs> he's just stealing the farm from Hardy. Yep. Not much Aluna can do against that, other than just run away. Should flag the fact too, with that Vladimir's offering now down on the Brewmaster, Roshan should be uh, pretty shortly on the priority list of Navi. They don't have a lot of damage for it, and the Naga Sleep is still on cooldown, so they don't have the extra insurance for it either. But definitely should be something in the back of their minds. Mm -hmm. In fact, they're actually already headed down there. Avorce probably should be just focusing on farming at the Radiant Jungle and keeping the lanes press pressured out before they go into the pit because it's not as important for them to grab the Aegis, the Immortal. Like, getting an Aegis onto a Luna, now that will be a critical moment. And in fact, Harney goes straight Scardy after his BKB. No mana staff for this guy. He goes full stab points with the Scardy. Honestly, I, I don't even mind this game. He's so big that if he can survive the majority of damage coming out, he can barrage an entire array of nukes on the enemy with just his glaives. It's he is really the main oh, character of this game. And Funic, Ooh. wow! What are you doing, man? Oh man! What are you doing? You That's not his yules. That's Ace's yules. They're trying to find the timing. Funic, can he get himself up into the air? Yes, he will. Blink dagger. One second time from now, and it's off cooldown. Oh wow! He's away to safety. Arise. He'll leap in. He'll chrono. He only found NS. There wasn't a recall running at the time. The flame rate bumping Arise back a little bit. So they use chrono. They use eclipse. They use dream. Uh, no, actually, don't dream call. But they did use Purge from Rise, and they got a kill on the call. They can't take the tier two account tower because fortifications for for the slowing him down. A four second tier three tower in the bottom lane, while Ace gets a double dream call in mid. Over on Denny, he needs his ass to wear off, and he goes for the split. He started the split in the middle of the Shadow Demon disruption, and now you're seeing Patch Law come into play right there. If that was all, well, I'm fairly certain he would have got that split off. But Denny will go down in front of the tier two tower. But that tier three tower is now to 460 life points. So I think yeah, Navi is still going to be happy with the trade. Yeah, I think they're still very content, but that was really a close call on that ultimate, as you said. Ooh, I, I... Vanek! He's going to put Honey on the, on the cliff. Oh! There's no TP scroll. TP. There's no There's TP. No They'll actually trap him up there with the Observer Ward. FNG's in the neighborhood. He's got Mystic Flare available. He wanted to wait until it was actually lost on Honey. Backs him into the corner. And then the Flame Break, not pushing him actually out and off the hill. They put the Urn Charge on him. 118, 100 life points. Funny jumps up there and he'll end the dominating spree. 500 gold in total for Funnick. 75 seconds on the sideline. And technically, actually, he got 765 gold in total for that kill. And almost 2.5k experience. Yeah, he got his level 16 off of that. That's, I guess, the bigger story. I'm not even sure if he was level 14 when he went for it, but regardless, 2.5k EXP indeed. And Naga Saren, of course, picks up her Amanda style, which is the third of possibly fourth and fifth items coming up in the future. They're going for Roshan now. They have Vladimir's on the Panda, and of course Rosh is much stronger at this point, but I think they're doing it. They're recalling other targets as well. Yeah, and this is bringing in all the teammates. Uh, at the same time though, Ryze is putting down observers and sentries. He doesn't see inside the pit. So that warning actually doesn't help him at all for this kind of situation. And when you've already got two heroes that slip their way in there, and you can keep recalling in more and more targets. Yep, there's another one. So he'll bring Funnick into the pit as well. Oh man, NS. <laughs> Still can't believe, like, if he had a mech, he might survive a little bit longer, but right now, like, what do you want to do? Like, you, you, you say this team doesn't need mech, would you just go in for a straight axe over on NS? 
Probably a mobility item, honestly. Like, the goal is to... You, you can't you... stick out that far when they just finished off Roshan. I gave your death yep. some thought. Honestly, in terms of items for the Keeper of the Light at this point, you can rush Axe if you really want to. It's probably unnecessary. I would say like a Boar Staff or a Blink Dagger would do. Just just the mobility item, maybe Gold Scepter for the Void, but there's a lot of magic damage to deal with. So for this, for this hero, this game, it's all about just positioning and playing full-on support, providing mana, mana leak every now and then when targets come too close. Illuminate from a distance and recalling targets. Yeah, what, what Keeper is generally known for. Doesn't really need items per se, but if needed be, probably a four staff, I would say. I'm loving this from Funic with his movement speed. Just the base movement speed is 473. Having Yules, Yasha, BTs. Speaking of that Yules item, Toby, again, it's, it's way too strong right now. It's basically the follow-up to Blink Dagger most of the time. It's stronger than four staff. The 2.5 second disable, 23 second cooldown, so just six above Blade Mill, and Blade Mill is already a fantastic item on its own. It disables Blink Daggers too. That's, it's so big. Yeah. Hey man, you remember me, like, we were casting a long time ago and I was singing the praises of that Yule Scepter. Right now though, Hani, he's in more trouble. He's being dragged back, then he jumps in, instantly goes to the split, Arise will get the Chrono off, starts going into a boss with a blinding line from NS, Arise can't attack Shite right now. He's throwing over the Life Strike at Ray here, the, uh, the Lena, buying some space, the Eclipse will go off, but Hani, he can't even kill a Funny. The Yule Scepter up, Hani will hit the deck right now, they need another stun, and they get him up in time. A Vorse actually cops the stun from, from Ace. Hani, Mystic Flare, there's enough damage. Batrider will take the kill. And Ace, the Naga is gonna be used. He'll turn off and then rip type. Ace has Blink Dagger available. He's also carrying around this gem. That's the one oh, that, that was, was nice initially play. purchased up by NS, and it's almost a full team wipe. And there it is. Sonic with a triple kill. He will bring down every last player there of Fnatic. And do they even blow the they didn't even blow the Aegis on a Vorst? Even if the Vorst had died then it would have been the Aegis the Immortal. Yeah, it would have still been a clean wipe and all the map control in the world they need. They took a tower two, tier 2 at mid, and the tier 2 at bottom has been dead for ages now. All they really need to do is just keep starving the enemy on their side of the map, pushing all the lanes with the Brewmaster, with the Naga Siren, and the Bat Rider, farming every single aspect of the map and just pushing it at one point when they have too much items to deal with. And honestly, Fnatic, it's it's already seems like they don't have enough items to combat against Na'Vi. Like, they have Honey at the top of the net worth, 18k on his own, and then the next guy on his list is his four position Lena. It's 8k. 8 point. They're actually a full 10,000 difference in their lineup. Yeah. And the, and the Lena's actually going in for a Laguna Blade build. Uh, 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 Toby, and this and is one of those Laguna games. Blade. One of those games where I really miss Nahaz's presence. I, I wish he could give me the stat on how many times mid lane Void has won Dota. Like, I, I can't believe. It's actually still being run. Uh, are we talking in this current version? And I'm not talking about the C version. I'm talking about like the whole version. Yeah, 6.82 overall. I don't even think. I don't even think at the start of 6.82 people, people put Void at mid. I mean that hero that was rider. pretty good. That high movement speed. He's got a full S and Y over him. Drags a rise back into the Mystic Flare of FNG. And then he's already looking for a, for a jump in. And they push the lanes in. Havos keeps the bottom lane going. He's actually farming up inside the jungle for, for now. And now he's going to realize, wait, I can just push that pressure that bottom lane, and what can they really do to stop me? Radiant like, Luna can mop up my illusions, but that's all. And the more Harney has to come down here and defend, the less he's able to be a presence in the map elsewhere. And that means Na'Vi can do exactly what they're doing now. They take the Tier 2 tower from the top lane. They've already got the aggressive Observer Ward on, on top of the Cliff 2. So if Fnatic even try and fight this, they're dead. Yeah, it is It is quite unfortunate. At this point, like it's so difficult for them to just not get picked off around the map. They actually played really well in the early game too. That's the funny thing. Like They moved around with the smokes and they got decent farm in the jungle. They got a lot of critical pickoffs on Hobos from mid 10 to 16, but again, their draft is just not oriented to be able to take advantage of the kills and be able to apply tower pressure or map control pressure against Batrider and against Panda Spirit. Void jumps up, Chronos nice got Dendi. At the same time, Funny's coming in. The blinding line's gonna cause some more problems and a rise sealed up. There's an Argus Sleep gonna be used. I think a ball should probably turn this thing off right now. Finish killing a rise. He's backtracking the orb damage. Leaves himself away. Ten life points. But he's been mana leaked up. The SE destruction will save his, his life here. Up towards the higher ground, but he can't dodge everything. The Naga Radius Burn will kill him off. And the Brulings, they're in pretty deep as Luna hits the deck. BKB still available here with the ult from Hani. He's gonna get Lassu to drag outside of his face. He must trigger BKB Eclipse, but the Creep Wave is 
so close here. It's going to soak up a lot of them. Then again, Farnik cop two of those beams. Now a boss. He just carries got a full heart on this Naga Siren. Honey cannot battle the light points of that Naga. The Aegis will be reclaimed at the moment, giving the full regeneration up to the Naga Siren. And they come up towards the high ground. Double buybacks. Kaomi looking for an opening. He's got Laguna play. Denny jumps in. He got the clap over on Kaomi. The Yule Scepter up into the end. Lion's Strike Ray couldn't actually does get it off, but loses his life by the time it actually finishes channeling. As the puck will just orb himself down. The only sole survivor here for Fnatic. And I got a feeling Nami will never leave this base of Fnatic. Now with Nami, you have that region on the boss with all that heart and all those earn charges. Of course. There it is. GG. GG will come off here from Fnatic. So game is over. Game was good, but Na'Vi will take a 2-0 victory over Fnatic, pushing Fnatic up against Team Reno, Tinkerino. That match, I believe, will, should be uh, scheduled for tomorrow night. Either that or the winner's bracket final, Na'Vi versus Power Rangers. And uh, as I mentioned previously, that's not a game which Na'Vi will feel confident in. Is that so? Well, it's, it's Power Rangers. Every time there's like a clutch game, with Na'Vi versus Power Rangers, Power Rangers seem to come out on top. And Power Rangers, man, like if you saw what they did to Team Reno, Tinkerino. Yeah, yesterday that was.